There we go. We're live now. We're live? I probably better pay attention. Yeah. (laughs) You want to start out by showing people your mullet? Oh, yeah. That's a great way to start this off. Check this out. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, that, guys. That's two haircuts in. It's it's commitment. You know, it's a little bit long on top, but, man, it it commands respect, and that's what I was going for, you know. And you, you grew the mullet because... Well, it wasn't really on purpose. I just had a large snarl of hair. I looked like a human version of a wire-haired pointing Griffon. So it's finally time to <laughs> cut cut my hair, and I left it up to our Instagram subscribers to tell me how I should uh, how I should cut it and mullet one out. So boy, you're you you're a brave you're a brave man. You're a brave man. I would never trust my uh, live <laughs> my live people to. Tell me how to cut my hair. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have Cheech or Clark. Do you, right. do you prefer Cheech to Clark? Well, the when or I'm in trouble care? or pulled over or stuff, that's when I get called Clark. Most people just know me as Cheech, but either one works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cheech of, of Fly Fish Food. Uh, fly fish food is a is a terrific operation <clears throat> it's um it's actually where i buy some of my fly tying materials that orvis doesn't sell so, so i'm a <laughs> i'm a customer and awesome. um, they have a that they, they have a great selection of stuff and they produce some some awesome uh videos cheats you must do like two a week don't you um right now i think we're at like yeah, two a week. Like I think we're on a Sunday Wednesday schedule. Wow. Um, so, yeah, lots of flies. We thought we might run out of content after about six months. That was in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we there's, we haven't run out of content. There's always yeah, something there's new. always something in always something in fly time. Yeah. So. so yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Cheech produces some awesome, awesome videos um, on par <laughs> on par with my nemesis Flagler. Um, ah, <laughs> well, Tim Tim's a good guy. Uh, we've had uh, many a Mexican dinner together at the fly tying show or the fly fishing show in Denver with our fulling mill people. So yeah, Tim's a good guy. And you know, I only say my nemesis because I we have a tie off once a month. Uh, oh yeah, and, yeah, and he uh, he uh, almost always beats me. So, oh really? Well, mm. we'll uh, maybe we'll have to work on that a little bit. I can offer some maybe, coaching. <laughs> maybe we should have a three way tie off sometime. I wish we had the real screen real estate. That would be really fun. Yeah, let's do it. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. We might be able to do it. I'll think about that. Anyway, yeah. we're, we're not here. To, we're not, actually not here to talk fly tying today. We're here to talk fly rods. And um, Cheech is uh, was one of our uh, evaluators of the new blackout uh, Euro rod. It's uh, it's eleven. It's eleven feet three weight, right? Yeah, it's eleven foot three weight. Three yep. weight. And this is a this is a rod that I that I haven't used much. I think I cast it a couple of times, but I I've, I've used the other the other two rods a lot more. Um, so I, I can't I can't offer much, and I'm not much of a Euro nympher. Um, so uh, Cheech, why don't you why don't you tell people about your experiences with the rod? Yeah, so I'll just kind of give you a rundown of it first. So we we've, we've had it for several months. Um, uh, all, all I know is when, when Orvis says, Hey, we're going to send you a package and nothing else. And a rod shows up, you use it. So anyway, it's a, it's a specific built Euro rod. It's got a down locking reel seat with a little fighting, butt. so down locking reel seat helps it so that it balances really well. Uh, label, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. And then it's a purpose built Euro rod. As you can see, the first, uh, stripping guide is really close to the, to the grip to avoid sag <clears throat> but as far as fishing it goes um i fished it quite a bit this spring and and honestly i up to this point i i kind of didn't love much that's uh, longer than 10 feet so 
you know, when, when it was an 11 three, I'm like, man, I wish it were 10 feet, but then we took it out and fished it and it balanced great. Uh, the recovery was really quick. Um, several times we'd go out and I'd start out by Euro nymphing. We actually have some videos of us fishing this. I, I can't remember the title of the video, but it's like an unlabeled rod. But anyway, taking it out, you know, fishing it Euro style and then popping on another spool of like weight forward three weight line and throwing dry flies with it. And I, I was super impressed with it. So I uh, did that quite a bit with this rod. Um, usually an 11 foot rod gets cast and tried like one or two times. And then a lot of them are just too heavy and clunky, but I've, I've really liked the feel of this one. The other technique that we used with this rod quite a bit, there's a video that we did called, I think, Tiger Trout and Small Streams or whatever. And I took uh, this rod out and did that um, with a jig streamer. So it's a heavy streamer fished on a Euro line. And you kind of cast out and, and high, st high stick through there and caught some really nice Tiger Trout and Browns on this rod. And I was super impressed with the, the fighting ability on this rod too. So um yeah i'm i'm a i'm a believer so solid work orvis on the the creation of this rod and you guys did uh you guys did a uh, euro dry dropper video recently too yeah yeah so um when you when you say you guys lance and curtis went and did that while i was stuck yeah. here in the shop those dirty rats so um yeah, the 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 idea there is, and a lot of people come in the shop and they say, "Hey, I'm I fish a lot of small streams. I need a short rod." And you know, the the thing about that is, a long rod can actually be very advantageous in in a short or a small stream situation because you can reach. Um, what people don't realize in a small stream is there are a lot of uh, intermixed currents and everything, so it's really hard to get a drag a dra a good drift through there but if your whole leader's off the water um you can just kind of pop your fly down into the water um and uh, keep keep everything off get a really good drag free presentation um and so the the rig was on that one instead of using a weight forward line they were using a euro line <clears throat> and you'd have like a chubby chernobyl as your first fly and that is tied off a tag section it's not tied in line so you're tying a triple surgeon's knot um, and say you're fishing a chubby Chernobyl or, or something like that, whatever fly you like. And then a, a fairly heavy nymph underneath that. And the idea is even if that nymph is too heavy for the dry fly, you're suspending your, your line and uh, you're not allowing that chubby to, to sink. So Anyway, you're kind of just guiding it through. It's like Euro nymphing, but a dry fly happens to be right on the surface. And so you can control it really well. Um, you, you can get down and fish the deeper runs and then also have a really good drift. And, you know, a, a long rod is an absolutely deadly tool, even in small streams. <clears throat> yeah, I really, I really try to urge people to stay away from ultra short rods in general yeah. they're harder to cast harder to control line and and you'd be yeah. surprised that you know as long as you don't have a lot of stream side brush uh, yeah you know, if your streams are more open and rocky and mount, mountain type small streams you usually have plenty of room to cast mm -hmm. up and down sure uh, so yeah that's uh i've never fished an 11 footer in a small stream but i i'm gonna give it a try yeah give it a try just uh, no hero casting, Tom. I know how you roll. Well, I don't hear. I don't <laughs> ever. I am kidding. not able to hero cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway. So lots of I'm questions. Uh, people must have come in late. Lots of questions about what what is the weight and the length and uh, <clears throat> an eleven foot three weight. Do you know what the physical weight is of that rod? Jeez, I'm not sure if I know. You know what? I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe the the behind the scenes guy can look it up and put it on there. I don't know. But um, a lot of times with these, uh, the, the critical thing is is like the swing weight and how it doesn't feel tip heavy, especially with an 11 foot rod. 
And I actually balance this rod out with uh, a Sage ESN reel because it has variable weight systems in it. Hint, hint, Orvis, that might be a good idea. <laughs> but uh, um, no, just just an, an oversized reel, like a five weight reel on this rod balances it out really well. And then you you don't even think about like how heavy the rod is or, or how light the rod is compared to the reel. As long as you're balanced out fairly close, it's it feels good to fish. So, sorry, I'm looking see, over at my computer and doing yeah, looking at the comments too. So, I see a comment here. Orvis had an all rounder a long time ago. Junk, yeah, Maurice. It was like 40 years ago. <laughs> we've we've <laughs> yeah. learned a little bit about making rods since the all rounder. Yeah. You know, they're uh, they're. You know, a lot of people ask about, well, what about this brand versus this brand? Because, you know, 15 years ago, I had this rod from X company and it was terrible. It's like, yeah, well, every company out there has made a, a bad rod at some point. But right now, they're all pretty dang good. Hmm. So. <clears throat> Ryan says, are there more blackouts in the works? Oh, Ryan, we'd have to we'd have to shoot you if we told you that. Sorry, that's top secret. And, I'm kind of taking. I, I, sorry, go ahead. I would, I would take that as a yes, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Now, I, I really fishing, like that. I'm going fishing time. with the guy who knows on Saturday. I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, twist his arm. Yeah, um, you know, I, I saw a comment where Ed asked uh, why the blackout series. Well, um, it's. Um, you know, you're always learning. You're always learning new things about making fly rods. And Helios three's been around for a while, and we um, we actually haven't um, we haven't perfected the right material for the next generation of rods yet. We're we're, we're still working uh, with new materials, and we we come out with a new series. Where it has to have a a true performance improvement. However. Um, there have been some construction improvements in making uh, different different lengths of rods, and um, that's what they incorporated in these. It was, you know, we were able with the new construction techniques using the Helios three material to make an eleven foot three weight, to make a nine and a half foot five weight that would feel, you know, the eleven footer feels like a ten weight, nine and nine and a half five feels just like a a nine foot rod but you have that extra reach so it's it's more in the way the material is applied than it is um than it is uh you know a, a new generation of rods some some different construction techniques but um as far as the cosmetics are concerned um you know that's just that's just to make them a little different you know and i i i'll add to that too like there are lots of companies out there that think that they can just tack on another foot to the butt section of a nine foot rod and voila, they have a 10 footer. And I've cast a few of those rods and they're like, I, I, I'm really easy to please with fly rods for the most part, but those rods are junk. Like I, I did not want to continue to fish them. So, you, you know, there's a lot of science that goes into putting together um, different weights and lengths and get them to actually feel good and cast well. So I agree with that. Yeah. It took a lot of, um, it, it took a lot of, a uh, lot of development time actually. Yeah. And right now, right now, um, we're actually, uh, we can't make fly rods fast enough. These, um, these blackout rods are in limited supply. In fact, I think right now we're out of the, we're out of the 11 foot three weight and we're out of the nine and a half or a five, but we will have them I think in a, in a few weeks. So um, the rod shop is just, is just cranking. I'm excited to try that nine, five, five. I think that's going to be a player like dry dropper from a drift boat. Sign me up. Now there, there <laughs> are some, there probably are some models out in some Orvis retail stores and Orvis dealers. So, um, uh, you know, if people if people are looking for one of these models and you want one right away, uh, you know, call your call your local dealer and um, see if they have them because there are there are some out there in circulation. 
just aren't any yeah. uh, extras in the rod shop right now. So you know, yeah. they are there. But call your call a fly shop, call your local Orvis dealer, see if they got them. If you want to go in and try one. Yeah. Looks like we have a few Spanish comments from Marcelo. So, hola, Marcelo. Mucho gusto. Saludos desde Estados Unidos. We always have to take care of our uh, South American brothers, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway. So, yeah, we when we first uh, got news of these, we we immediately ordered the, the Euro rods. We sell a ton of Euro rods. So, I think we just have a, a couple left of the, the the blackouts that we ordered. So pretty cool. Well, you have more than you have more than we do in our warehouse right now. So people should call you, right? <laughs> yeah, call us up. Uh, these you got any nine and a half for fives? Now. No. You got any nine? No. <laughs> I think we were able to get some on the way. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Curtis won't tell me what what he ordered. So he knows that I'll just blab about it, and then it makes everything hard for the warehouse guys when people call and say, "Hey, you said you're going to get this." So, no, not really. I, I I'm pretty sure we have some that are like in the mail right now. We'll see. I saw I saw a question about someone asked, "What three weight line did you put on the uh, on the rod when you uh, when you fished a dry fly with it?" Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, Are you my, flicking me off there? Are you flicking me off, Cheech? I keep, keep going like this. No, I my uh, my <laughs> daughter's getting ready to go to college, and she's incessantly texting me. So I'm <laughs> I'm swiping up on my phone. Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious, Audrey Pierce, you're a terrible person, and stop texting me. She won't watch this, so that's how I can say that. Um, but if I really wanted to flip, no. I, I save that for Brigham. Anyway, uh, the, the line that I like, the way forward line that, that I really liked for this is the Scientific Angler's Infinity Taper. Um, I'm using that Infinity Taper on pretty much everything right now from, you know, three through six weight, pretty much. Um, I, I just really like the, the texture of that line and, and the taper. Um, you guys probably what what's your line the the pro series line that has that good texture on it yeah. very similar to the sa lines so yeah well they make they make our they make our lines so um yeah yeah the tapers are tapers are just a little bit different right um you know that's a misnomer and um uh that you can't fish dry flies on a euro rod you know people say oh if mm -hmm. i want to switch to dry fly what do i do do you want to um give people some reassurance that yes, you can fish a dry fly on a, on a euro rod. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, we, uh, you know, Lance Egan works here and he's like super techie fisherman and, and, uh, Pablo Castroneves from Spain, who's a competitive angler came and worked with team USA one, one summer and they wanted to work on dry fly fishing. And so, they were fig, you know, he came and just with his normal Euro rods, but the, the leader build was absolutely insane. So it's like a, you know, if you look up the George Harvey leaders from, from a long time ago, super long leaders with really long tippet sections on the end. And the idea is if you turn your rod over and, you know, straighten out the, the leader, um, the, uh, the uh, tippet section is not going to turn over completely. It's going to kind of pile up at the end. And that's ideal because it allows you to do kind of like a micro pile cast, if you will. And it allows the fly to, to kind of stay in that zone and, and uh, drift naturally um, for longer. And so a Euro rod is perfect for turning those over. So that's, that's what we did a lot. Um, and with that leader, like if you need to reach out and cast further with that, say, an infinity taper line, you can actually cast like you can present a, a small dry fly, I would say, you know, 50, 60 feet away, really delicately still and uh, get really, really good presentation. We did that. We did some, you know, you know, high stick dabbing with it. We were doing some downstream presentations and just it's a phenomenal way to fish dry flies um in fact if there's a, a hatch going on that's say caddis or smaller you know caddis pmds betas here here in utah um we're pretty much taking our euro rods out there now if i'm 
fishing from say a drift boat or if i'm fishing you know a, a heavier dry dropper rig with you know uh, a chubby chernobyl or a bigger tractor i'm probably going to fix up a different rod for that but for the majority of like the techie hatch matchy stuff a euro rod is absolutely phenomenal at that stuff so just my opinion <clears throat> I saw a question about the nine. I'll put it up here. Um, how does the nine, nine foot five? It's actually not nine and a half, nine foot five inch compared to Recon twenty twenty six weight. Um, for a little more distance, you know, you're always going to get a little more distance with a heavier uh, fly line. You're also going to get a little bit more distance w within reason with a longer rod. So I would expect, Mike, that you're going to get, you're going to get, I think, roughly the same distance with that nine foot five inch as your six weight. What you're, what you're going to get is a little more delicacy because it's a five weight, and you're also going to get the ability to hold hold line off the water, uh, to reach, reach better, reach mend, and um, you know keep your keep more line and and even part of your leader off the water. So that's the that's the main difference, I think. And the the H three is going to be a little bit more accurate than the than the recon as well, just because it's it's um, you know it's got the little extra special sauce in it that the other rods don't have. I need the recipe to that sauce because I want to add it to some flies, you know, so that they, they <laughs> land accurately. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll work on flies. <laughs> Oh, and that's Kill. when when you're casting a five versus a six as well. You know, there's there's a little bit to do with like arm fatigue. You know, you're you're going to have less arm fatigue with a five. Um, it's just going to feel like uh, you know, just overall better over a long longer use of time casting dries with a a five weight versus a six, even if it's in five inches longer. The other thing I find with that nine foot five inch <laughs> is it roll casts like a dream I bet. Dream. long long more accurate than usual roll casts uh so you know you, you can't always get to a place where you can make a big hero false cast and uh, you, know, you get in a place where you need to roll cast um and it it, it really does roll cast quite well that's awesome i gotta try that one What's the right, eight let's... weight that you guys have? It, 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 the eight weight's a shorter eight weight designed for boats. Is that right? It's a shorter eight weight. It's designed, you know, unfortunately, um, it, it kind of got billed as a uh, as a saltwater rod for, for mm -hmm. like snook and tight cover. Um, of course, a shorter rod is easier to fight a fish <laughs> with. So mm -hmm. when you're in a boat uh, with a, you know, in, in salt water, um, it's easier to fight a fish with that shorter rod, uh, but it has really high line speed and um, it's great for, for, you know, mangrove fishing, brush fishing for snook, uh, small tarp and things like that. But it's also a great bass rod, you know? Yeah. That's what I shouldn't would think. Be, it shouldn't just be billed as a saltwater rod because it's a great large mouth, small mouth rod. It's a great pike rod, you know, for smaller yeah. pike for that matter. Um, so it, it it shouldn't be pegged as a strictly a saltwater rod. And I would even think that maybe that would be a good rod for the guys that like to go chase big browns with mice, you know, you know, mm -hmm. turning over larger flies with it. Um, kind of reminds me of when Sage came out with their bass series. Curtis got a bunch of those, and they're actually really fun to fish. Super mm -hmm. lightweight, very responsive. They are, they are, those shorter, heavier rods are, are fun to fish with, definitely. Yeah. Do you guys think these longer rods are the future? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Cheech? Are well, longer rods the future? I think that um, a, a more diverse quiver of rods, whether they're longer or shorter, um, just they give you the ability to, to change your fishing uh, quite a bit. Like, um, I don't know, I, I think uh, a long rod is awesome. Like, we fished the, 
but then put six weight H3D in still waters quite a bit. And um, a 10 foot six weight in a lake is like phenomenal. Uh, like way different experience fishing something like that than a, than a nine foot six weight. But I probably wouldn't take that 10 foot six weight out on the drift boat throwing streamers, just pounding the shoreline with streamers. That's when I would want it more like a nine foot or nine and a half foot rod. So I wouldn't say that they're the future in, in that they're going to replace other rods. It's just, it's, it's awesome to have the, the different lengths available for, for specialized techniques. And I think that's, that's the idea. You, you'll always be able to find the nine foot five weights of the world. Those will always be available, but there are people who are looking for, you know, a, a little bit more specialty, uh, in their rods like that nine and a half or nine, five, five. I'm, I'm super excited about, I want to get one of those, uh, eventually <laughs> and play it's with that. Been my, it. It's been my standard rod, except for small streams. Uh, yeah, I my bet. standard trout rod all year long. I, I'm really happy. I'm not giving that rod away. It's not, it's not going back. I think I, I think I borrowed it from somebody in marketing, Drew, and uh, it, he's he's fist pumping behind the scenes. And um, it, you're not going to get it back. You're never going to get that rod back. So now that, that that that's like like who's going to go to Tom Rosenbauer and say, hey, give me the rod back <laughs> that. Uh, the Orvis rod that we let you borrow. Hey, we need you to give that back now. Nearly think, anybody in the nearly anybody in the company is going to do that. Well, let me just give you some advice. Just tell them no. Say I'm Tom <laughs> Rosenbauer. I'm keeping it. <laughs> well, that saying I'm Tom Rosenbauer doesn't doesn't hold any water around Orvis, believe me. Um, but living 35 minutes away from the office out in the country, they got to come and get it. So. I don't yeah, go to the office anymore. Same thing. Same thing. I, I like that tactic quite a bit. Let's see. Is Sean Brilliant still in charge of fly patterns? No, he has not been for many years fly fishing his life. Sean Brilliant is now our uh, bamboo rod maker. Sean Brilliant is, uh, is the bamboo rod maker in the Orvis rod shop. So he's graduated from from flies to uh, bamboo rods i don't think i would ever be able to make that jump like woodworking in general is like my nemesis like i can tie flies like crazy but that is an art well, those are so yeah. cool i'm the world's worst carpenter i would uh battle you for that title yeah. well people <laughs> say i'm the world's up. worst fly tire when i tie against flagler <laughs> oh jeez. They're harsh. <laughs> Too harsh. Oh, they are. Those 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 tying sessions are, are they get pretty pretty heated. You just uh, remind them that you're only you're just impressing an animal with the brain the size of a pea. So Yeah. That's it. You know, Ed, I am not <laughs> sure if they've reopened the fly shop to visitors. Uh Drew, maybe you can post if no we they have not reopened the fly shop to visitors um still kind of under uh covid restrictions in the fly in the uh, rod shop so we normally give a tours of our rod shop uh five days a week at 10 o'clock in the morning um but uh, uh stay tuned it, it's not it's not open yet i think what's going to happen ed is you they're going to keep you banned as long as you have Olaf the snowman as your Facebook profile picture. I'm going to throw like a brown <laughs> trout or something on there. <laughs> that was a joke. This is this comment was not sponsored by Orvis. <laughs> Will there be any specialist reels built for the Euro rods? Oh, I can't tell you that. But um, what... What would people want to see in a specialist reel for a Euro rod? What, uh, Cheech? What do you What do you think would be needed for a for a so, special special reel for a Euro rod? There, there's one thing that sets a good Euro reel apart, and it's a full framed reel. 
because the Euro lines are like 0. 0.22 inches, are really thin diameter lines, and a lot of times they like to sneak out of the that where the reel connects to the actual frame. And so, if that frame is full frame, meaning it's got a rim around the outside of the frame, uh, that line can't escape. And so that's that's what the purpose built Euro reels have. That's the first thing. And then a lot of the other uh, Euro reels have uh, an interchangeable weight system. So if you have, let's say, a longer rod and you want to balance it perfectly, you can actually add weight to that reel. Tom's got to grab his walkie-talkie landline. <laughs> he just hung up on somebody. Yeah, I don't know who it was. What are you going to do about your extended warranty on your vehicle, though? So, I mean... What if that that's was probably what it was? That's probably <laughs> what it was. <clears throat> you know, when they call me, I try to sell them a fly rod usually. You know, I, I, yeah. I keep them on the line and I, I try to see if they would, you know, ask them if they like to fish. And then I try to sell them a fly rod. I figure, if, you know, they're calling me at work. I'm going to do my job. Yeah. Oh, this is a good question here. Carson Leverett, Cheech, in your opinion, does Tom Rosenbauer have pro status? Well, there's one quick test. Tom, what color is your tying vise? Which one? Just like, do you have a purple vise of any sort? I have a blue one. I have a blue no. Renzetti. I have a blue. Uh, no, it's I have a purple. blue. It's I have a purple. blue Regal, but my Renzetti is an old. I mean, it's, God, it must be 30, 30 years old. It's just the old silver. So just the quick answer to this is unfortunately no. Tom does not have pro status because I don't have on, a purple. Yeah, hold on one second. You see these purple okay. uh, highlight lights behind me? That's just step one. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the the purple popsicle. And I had a uh, custom rod builder do some uh, rod wraps on it too. Oh, uh, I've got vice envy now, big time. <laughs> no, that's the joke that I always tell people is if you want to be a pro, you have to have a purple popsicle vice. Um, Renzetti, are you listening to this? Yeah. Hey, Lily and Andy, we got to get Tom yeah. hooked up. It was so <laughs> funny. Um, one of our customers is a golf announcer for the PGA Tour or the, the, the British tour. And uh, I challenged him to say purple popsicle in like a match. And uh, he did, he said, he, he is a guy drops a putt. It's on like TV. And he's like, no, that putt's as sweet as a purple popsicle. as my friend Cheech would say. <laughs> and the other announcer just roasted him over that. But I for sure recorded that and put it on my Facebook page. So yeah. If you have a yeah. golf announcer talking See, about just it, just plain old silver. And I don't even know which Ooh. model that. Which model is that? That's it, it's like that's a master vice. That's that's uh, the heater, and they they haven't made many changes to that vice since the nineties um, because yeah. it's such a good vice. It is so it's awesome. They just uh, the did some different colors. So <laughs> anyway, there you have it, people. Tom. There, there, there are some openings to pro status, but unfortunately, he's not there yet. It's, uh, it's okay, you know. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I don't oh, really want to be a pro. Oh come on! Not that, not that you're not cool, but uh, you know, I'm just, as, I, I just as soon keep my amateur status. So, and that's the joke is like, there's really no pro like you can be a pro staff for a company and still be a terrible tire and angler it's just how how well did you rake the wool over that company's eyes when you applied for it so <laughs> that that's all i've done <laughs> do, do we have any more questions about euro nymphing or or the rod come on guys we, we we're talking about purple vices here uh, we're we're struggling we don't we don't have any we don't have any tough questions. Um, do you get purple popsicle gift wrap with an Orvis blackout rod purchase? I don't know. I don't know how they're shipping them. 
that's uh that's another joke we uh people or one of our customers asked me to gift wrap a, a new rod that he bought and it was like very terribly done with purple so that's that's the joke there anyway we're always serious here in the fly shop we never have any fun yeah <laughs> yeah we don't have any fun on these facebook lives either price range for the new rod I don't what know. is it? I don't buy them. I don't buy them. You don't buy them. I think they're you're around not the supposed grand. To say that. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say, oh, yeah. I'm going to look it up. I'm on my website right now. Nine ninety seven ninety nine. Yeah, so, so not quite a grand. Less than a, a grand. <laughs> Less than a grand. Uh, guys, here's uh, a good one. Yeah. Automatic reels. Opinions. Have you ever used one, Adrian? <laughs> if you have, you'd have an opinion. You know, I I see those every once in a while pop up like in the Euro Nymphy forums. And the idea mm -hmm. is, you know, you get your line in real fast so you can fight a fish. But I've messed with some and maybe I'm I haven't just held the right one. But the problem is I haven't messed with many that have like real smooth drags once you get that line in. So I would rather have something that's not going to just explode on the river. Just something simple, you know, just yeah, my, my opinion. My father gave me an old automatic <laughs> reel when I was a kid. He wasn't a fly fisherman, but he somehow he had an automatic reel. In fact, here it is. It's, it's an heirloom treasure. It's the only heirloom. Oh, I got that's way father. cool. Um, and it's totally broken because I opened it up once and the spring came out and went all over the room. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it's cool. It's cool to have on my shelf. Um, somebody could probably fix it someday, but it does not work. Anyway, that's my heirloom for my family, my wealthy family. Um, <laughs> that's cool. Have y'all considered single foot guides for a three quarter of the rod double foot for the tip section? The line doesn't get tangled. Chris, we have we have experimented uh, with single foot guides. We've done we've done we've uh, wrapped some rods with single foot guides and we've played with them, and we we really haven't found uh, an advantage to them. I think I think in my opinion in general. Someday somebody is going to come up with a better guide because we've been using the same snake guides for about 130 years. They haven't changed. Um, and there's got to be a better way to, to stick a fly line to a rod uh, than snake guides. And I've spent half my life at Orvis uh, but not trying to figure out what would be better, and, but I'm not very clever. Uh, but I think someday somebody's going to come up with a, a, you know, a real improvement on fly rod guides. I don't think single footed, in my opinion, is is the way to go. Have you ever tried them, Cheech? Um, I've I used to build a lot of rods. Single footed actually, uh, it gets you like you you use half the resin, so you don't have to do two sections of resin on the rod. So you you save a little bit of weight that way. Mm -hmm. um, so. It just depends on what you're doing, really. You know, I, I like snake guides a lot. Uh, one one company that shall not be named built a rod with uh, the you know the titanium snake guides that snap back. But the mm -hmm. there was a weird coating on them, and they were really thin, and they would grab line like I could not cast. I it was almost like when you forget to thread one of the guides on your rod and you try to cast with it. That's what it felt like. So. Uh, you know, give me the classic old snake guides that are just chrome plated any day. I like that stuff. I still think I still think there's a better there's a better uh, there's a there's a there's gonna be a better way, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'll be watching because that would be cool. Uh. Are there single foot guides on that 11 foot three weight you have? Do you know what? I only grabbed the butt section because I didn't want to bring I didn't want to break the whole rod. So downstairs in the shop, there's an 11 foot three weight without a butt section on the wall. 
It says I I'm I am mistaken because it says here somebody behind the scenes said we do use single foot guides on the blackout H3 11 foot three way. And I know when when we tested them, we tested them on uh, when, I, when I was involved, we tested them on uh, bigger saltwater rods and didn't find use. But it, it looks like I am totally mistaken. There you go. Uh, Orvis behind the scenes. Thank you for clearing yeah. that up. Yeah, I feel pretty stupid. It's only the first time today. <laughs> hey, we're we're not uh we're not rod pros, we're tying pros, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell people. Oh, uh, that's a four piece rod, right? Uh, somebody a couple of people have asked how many sections. That's a four piece rod. Yeah. 11 foot. Um here's a here's a good question that that always comes up. Um hook keepers. What do you think of hook keepers, Cheech? I like them. I use them uh, quite a bit. Um, a lot of people have moved away from, or they, they don't use hook keepers because they don't want their loop to loop connection to go through their rod because mm -hmm. it's a pain in the butt to pull it out. Well, mm -hmm. the easy solution to that is just lop that loop off, throw it in the trash like you should and nail knot that on there. <laughs> just joking. That that's sarcasm, you, but that's what I do. But uh, if you do that, you can stick your fly in there and just reel your line all the way through through your guides, and it's easy to pull out and start fishing. Um, but my opinion, I do like um, hook keepers on my rods. But it's not the end of the world if they don't have one. You can just, you know, hook it on to the, the, the guide closest up, or loop it around your reel. And, I mean, think about it you're you're talking about something that is literally useless in the function of casting like it's just a storage option and it's convenient but it's definitely not the end of the world yeah personally personally i don't like them because um i, I don't like my fly line inside the rod tip um anytime because it's it's much easier if i'm walking from spot to spot or i'm in a drift boat and i've reeled up for a minute um, I, I always got my fly line outside of the tip of the rod because, and I use long leaders. I use, uh, you yeah. know, I use typically 10 to 10 to 15 foot leaders, um, for most fishing. And I don't want, I don't want that fly line in, inside the guides. Uh, even with a nail knot, even with a nail knot, it, it will catch sometimes there's a connection there and it's going to catch. I, I just, I never use one. And I find that the fly comes off the hook keeper when I'm walking through the brush a lot anyways, whereas, whereas it doesn't come off on when I hook it on a guide. But that's just me. Well, there you have it. That's a, a very scientific answer to your question, Luke. And now you will know whether you should or should not use a hook keeper. If you really want a hook keeper on your rod, it's quite easy to buy a spool of thread and a hook keeper and wind one on. Just spool it up. And people aren't doing it to save costs because it doesn't cost that much to put a hook keeper on a right. Um, it's, not a, it's not a cost measure. <clears throat> Let's see. I got a comment the other day about uh, these these new rods not having the white label. Somebody was thinking that I hated the white label, um, but that's not the case. <laughs> the color of the label on the rod doesn't matter to me. Uh, these H3 <laughs> rods, I've been fishing, I think I've got a four weight, a five weight, a uh, six weight and an eight weight all in the and now this uh, 11 foot three weight and i have beat them to death i've dragged them down rivers in argentina um uh, very durable rods but uh yeah the fish uh, don't care what the label is and there there was a comment here someone saying about how the obnoxious h3 uh that his brother-in-law fished so sorry that we hurt your feelings <laughs> That's it. Can't control that. Huh? 
Cheech, there's been a couple. Uh, there's been a couple questions. One is if you use a tapered leader or you know, more of a straight leader when you euro nymph, and then also do you build your own cider and what's the makeup? Yeah. So I definitely build my own leaders. Um, more and more, we've been moving to super thin leader builds, and so. Um, before, like when we get someone going with Euro nymphing straight up, straight off the bat, we typically use Maxima Chameleon, four feet of 20 pound, four feet of 15 pound, four feet of 12 pound to a cider, which is, you know, roughly between 18 inches and, and uh, two feet long. But anymore, we're just taking like a straight section of say six pound amnesia or six pound chameleon and running that straight down like 12 feet to a, a cider and the cider is usually just a multicolored piece of nylon uh, monofilament <clears throat> that you put a tip ring to the end of so most important thing there is just find a, a cider that you can see uh, there's not really one that's better than another because everybody's eyes work differently so i really like the new cider from Cortland. um it's it's good but that said there are thousands of different ciders out there. You can use the wax to put on your cider or your leader to see it better. Um, but the idea, the reason behind the thin leader is so that you can fish further away. Uh, the thing that kills uh, effect effectiveness in Euro nymphing is if you have sag in your line uh, and, and little micro sag can cause, uh, it can be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish because if your line is sagging, it's pulling the flies diagonally across the water and you're not getting a drag free drift. It's, and, it, and it's exaggerated if you're fishing at distance. So if you're casting at distance, um, a super thin line, a super thin leader, a super thin cider, and then like 6X or 5X tippet, they'll, they'll allow you to really get your flies down to depth and to, to drift, uh, make longer drifts with that without really you know compromising the ability to have a drag free drift um so that's that's kind of the the most popular uh the most popular way to build a, a euro leader right now for people who are somewhat experienced in it and when i say experienced as long as you have gotten the hang of the other leader system and and how accurate that can be um it, it's a good kind of graduation to switch up or switch down to a uh, more thin leader. Here's a you good question. Cover more water. Yeah. Here's a good question. Opinions on twitching dry flies. Should you do it? Yes. And should you do it? No. <laughs> it just depends on the dry fly. I don't know what, what you think, Tom, but uh, twitching dries, it depends on the river. Uh, it depends on the fly as well. Caddis flies, I, I, I believe in the twitch, but not too much. Um, give it a little bit of a twitch and let it hang out and see if the fish eat it. But if it's like a little midge or betis or PMD or some smaller bug like that, um, probably best just to try to present it dead drifted. Uh, so yeah, you just kind of have to pick and choose um what hatch you're you're fishing what do you think yeah i think the, it needs to be used very <laughs> carefully um I'll, I'll sometimes do it as a last resort in small streams in particular but even you know even hoppers which do which do twitch and swim um i find that fish eat dead drift hoppers most of the time um, yeah a lot better than they eat a hopper that's twitch so that's um you know, sometimes you need to catch a fish's attention with a with a big mayfly or a big caddisfly. Uh, yeah. To let it let them know it's alive, but you got to be careful of it. So I have a funny story about uh, twitching flies. So we were fishing in uh, Argentina, and the guide had pretty broken English, and so I was fishing the front of the boat, and you had to twitch your <clears throat> your dry fly. Uh, you fish dry droppers and they would eat the dropper better if you twitched it also. So when he wanted me to twitch, he'd say, twitch, cheech, cheech, twitch, twitch. So <laughs> he's just started screaming, twitch, twitch. 
So <laughs> that was the big joke because he couldn't say cheech tweech. So <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that's the that was the joke of the day. Cheech tweech. Yeah. But, you know, as with all things, um, Luke, you, you, you need to experiment and see what the fish like. <clears throat> yeah. They're the, and, they're the final judge. And I, I tend to twitch flies more if I'm fishing a dry fly on a lake as well, because sometimes they need a little bit more movement there, but it, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yes, Maurice, the standard Orvis warranty, the 25-year warranty applies to these rods, so you can break it however you wish to break it and we will we will fix it the nice thing about the h3s is if you break a section and you go online to the rod repair uh, we can send you just the section you broke don't need to you don't need to send your rod back which makes things a lot quicker because um, the precision that the rod shop has developed in in making these rods in the old days every rod was just a little bit just a little bit different and uh, they had to they had to hand fit the ferrules when you broke a, a section uh, to replace it with the h3s they are so dead nuts consistent uh, that we don't need to do that so with h3s and maybe recons now um because of yeah. Yeah, drew's nodding yes um uh, the ferrule fit is so precise that uh, you break a you break a tip and you go online and um, fill out the form and we send you a new tip. Don't have to send the rod back. I was fishing my uh, four weight H three D, I believe it is, and there was a Sasquatch in the boat that sat on it and broke it. It wasn't me, I promise, but it, I broke one. And I had the new section in, I think, five days. It was pretty crazy. So back in action, and I fired the Sasquatch. He was no longer available to come fish with us. <laughs> it, may, it, may not, it may sometimes take more than five days just because they don't have the particular sure. section in stock um, because the rod shop has been so busy. Uh, so don't expect five days all the time, people. But if we have yeah, it, that was two years ago. Yeah. So that that was a while. <laughs> you back. have it. If we have it. You'll get it in five days or so. Cheech, have you or Lance fished the new blackout nymph rod? Nathan, that's what we've been talking about for the past uh, 50 minutes or so. <laughs> the answer is yes. The so answer is it's good. Nathan must have come in is, late. <laughs> you should buy one now. So yeah, uh, fish Euro nymphs, dry flies, Euro streamers. It's a good rod. Uh, Luke, tips on getting into smallmouth fishing from indicator, trout indicator, and dry flies. Hey, Luke, if you wait a couple of days, I have a podcast coming out Friday morning um, just on smallmouth bass fishing in late summer with Colby Tro. Uh, but basically, uh, it's you won't have any difficulty going from trout indicator and dry flies. You're going to have to learn to move the fly a little bit more. But uh, basically, it's uh, easy compared to trout fishing. Strip sets are your friend. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that is a good point. And also, if they eat it off the top, if it's a top water bite, make sure you wait till they return back into the water before you set the hook. Because a lot of times you'll pull it right out of their mouth. Anyway, smallies are fun, though. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. Any other questions that we have? Let's see. Let's see. Any, anything that we haven't answered? Yeah. So there you have it. We've, we've covered everything you ever, ever need to know about this uh, 11 foot three weight rod. <laughs> well, here's, 
Here's a question. Can I use one thin diameter from the fly line to the cider to avoid slack? Yes, I would say absolutely. Um, really thin, like six pound, eight pound. We've even ordered this stuff from France that's like, I don't even know what the diameter is of it, but um the key there is make sure it doesn't have a lot of memory you got to be able to stretch the memory out of it so that it it's it's nice and straight and obviously that it's strong but yeah that's that's the idea um we do also get a lot of people saying well why don't i just use monofilament on my reel why why do i even need a fly line and then orvis has some really cool euro nymph fly lines i've used for quite a bit but the answer is that the the monofilament is a lot more prone to slipping out of your reel like we talked about uh, because most reels are not full framed and the other thing is especially in wet conditions or, or cold conditions you're using your finger to manage that line and so if you're using your finger to manage line and it's just monofilament you go to set the hook you're gonna it's gonna slip through your hands you just don't have as good of a feel through your hands um, as a fly line now, you know, obviously you can do mono rigs, and a lot of people do, but I personally much prefer to be handling an actual fly line through my fingers than just monofilament. Yep. <clears throat> there were a few questions about whether or not the, the new rods are limited edition only or if they're going to be a standard feature for a long period of time. They're, yeah, they're going to – sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you, so. They're they're going to be a standard feature. They may not be exactly the same cosmetics, but the blackout is kind of a, a limited run, but, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, what's coming down the pike, I know you all want to know, but uh, like most companies, uh, like nearly every company, other company that you deal with, we, we're probably not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't go to the extremes that Apple does to, to uh, keep things under wraps, but, uh, you know. If you All like I know something, when I, buy it. When I got this rod, it was like just super covert. It had no labels on it. All I knew was a 11 foot three weight and that it may or may not be a rod in the future. So that's it. That's all I got. So we also got a comment here from old wise guy, Tim Johnson from the Timmy Grips. He says, can I take seriously the fly rod opinions of a bait caster aficionado like Cheech? The answer is yes, you can. In fact, you fly anglers, if you throw bait casters at bass and, and things like that, it will make you a better overall angler. <laughs> no, I love you know, bass that, fishing. I got to make sure that's the right Tim Johnson because there's two Tim Johnsons that come in here, and I made a snide comment once, and it was another Tim Johnson. It's this not, is it wasn't our friend. <laughs> No, this, this is a hundred percent the 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 Arizona leprechaun. I can see his oh, okay. uh, his logo. Yeah, wise guy okay. Tim. I know that I know Tim likes to bass fish the heathen way as well. So, right back at you, tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I use it for red fishing? Uh, not not this one. I wouldn't, Glenn. Not the <laughs> eleven three weight. Um, the uh, the uh, short eight weight. You definitely could for redfish, absolutely. But I wouldn't wouldn't use this one for redfish. Not the I mean, right tool. You, you could, but landing the fish might be a, a little bit uh, difficult. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how well, well do the three weight would throw a redfish fly too, unless you're dapping them out of the marsh grass right in front of you. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Anyway. All right, everyone. Well, um, thank you all for your for your great questions and your snide comments. We always love those. Yes. Um, 
I'm I'm feeling pretty stupid not knowing that that rod had single single footed guides. I think I might have seen a prototype without them, but anyway, um, now we know. Now we all know. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is, like, uh, just take a rod and fish it. You know, you don't have to overanalyze everything. <laughs> Yep, go to a go to a fly shop that has one, try it out, see how it feels, and go from there. Yep, we'll take your fancy uh, plastic card money and uh, let you take one home for uh, for for <laughs> for uh, forever if you want. So I think we have like two left here at Fly Fish Food. So anyway, well, All thanks right, uh, everyone. Thanks for having me on, Tom. It's always good to chat, and uh, I look forward to the the the, tri the trifecta fly tying tournament where we will both be beaten by Mr. Tim Flagler. Yeah, we gotta we gotta figure out if we can do that. I'm worried about having three people and having enough space for the fly tying, but we might be able to figure it out. So I think that would be fun. Yeah, I think for that'd sure, be really fun. Absolutely. All right. Do you have a do you have a way to live stream with your close up camera? Um, yeah, I could talk to the camera nerds here and tell them that I just need to do it, and it's their job to figure it out. So, uh, if we can't, we can blame it, blame it uh, squarely on Brigham. So, no, you should be able to with the right connectors. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. need a uh, you need a uh, a thing that goes from <laughs> HDMI to. Yeah, I, I'm sure we do. A, we got you need a, a thing. You need a we thing. got a cabinet full of cables. You could tie okay. up an army with it. So yeah. All right. We, let's we let's talk it. about it. A three way All right. a three way tying contest would be fun. All right. Sounds good. Okay, Cheech. All well, right. Thank we'll you leave everyone with the for mullet. your questions. You gotta see the mullet, the mullet at the end. You saw it at the front front, and now you saw it at the end. So <laughs> and if you're looking for one of these new blackout rods, probably the best place is your local Orvis dealer because they probably have them, whereas we may not in our in our uh, warehouse. So, perfect. Thanks, Cheech. <laughs>